Hi everybody! Soraya and I are here today to talk about sailor nib comparisons. So here on the table we have a few things laid out already. Um, we have sailor pro gears, we have some sailor 1911s, 1911 standards um, to give us a different representation of the nibs and Soraya will talk about that a little bit more later. Um, I have also been working hard on this all day. <laughs> um, the, the actual line comparisons which we'll be showing you close-ups of um, a little bit later in the video um, and we decided ultimately like the question was what would we use to compare the lines with mm -hmm. so we were thinking about gel pens at first but ultimately we decided to use these Culpic multi liners yeah. and they're really similar to like micron markers that a lot of artists use they're just very precise in terms mm -hmm. of their line width so we thought it would be a good idea to use these here so you guys may know by now but Sailor is definitely one of our favorite brands uh, for fountain pens here at Yoseka and personally yeah. I love my sailor pens. It's definitely my favorite pen maker. I have two sailor pens. This is this one is probably my favorite. It's the Sailor Shikiori Dragon Palace. So pretty. I know it's so pretty. I got it. Oh, well, they released it like last, last year, year mm -hmm. and um, it was delayed. And I just it was when it finally came, I like almost cried. Oh. It was just like <laughs> such a happy day. So pretty. Yeah. So um, this is the pen that I use most often to write mm -hmm. with, um, and. The thing about Sailor Nibs and part of why I love them so much is that they're they, they're unique. They have different properties to them than a lot of other fountain pens. First and foremost, I think one of the most satisfying things about it is that they have this quality called feedback, mm -hmm. which is um, it's a little bit hard to describe. You know, people talk about the smoothness of a fountain pen, and feedback is the idea of the, when you write with something, when you write with a fountain pen, it's almost like the satisfying, not scratchiness, but a little bit of feedback, like tactile feeling that you get from the paper when you're writing, similar mm -hmm. to when you write with a pencil. So Sailor is known for having that quality, so it's not, it's not like buttery smooth, like with a pilot nib, it, it has a little bit of mm -hmm. feedback and you're, it's like you're really feeling the paper it's almost that like, you're writing on. It's like an immersive experience, like the yeah. paper is writing with you. Yeah, exactly. So it's really, really nice. That's why I like it a lot. Um, something else that's special about Sailor Nibs is people talk about their firmness and they are um, actually, Sailor Nibs are marked here with all of them H and the nib size. So this is mine, this is HMF, and this one, H stands for hard. So they are quite hard, they are quite firm, um, some more than others, and we'll go into that a little bit more later, but that's another quality of Sailor Nibs. Mm -hmm. And um, last but not least, something that's really cool about them is that they have a special grind to them. So a lot of European fountain pens, they are, they come with more of a rounded tip mm -hmm. um, at the end, like right, right there. And the Sailor Nibs are ground to be more at an angle. Mm -hmm. And so the reason for that being they're really made for Japanese character writing. So they're really, that's part of the why they're so popular in Japan and Asia in general. Um, they really mimic the brush strokes of a, of a brush when you're writing. So, so that's kind of like a few things about Sailor Pens that we love and like what makes their nibs so special. So Soraya is gonna tell us a little bit about uh, the Sailor Nibs. Yay, okay. <laughs> so uh, basically to break it down in a very simple way, there are three types of Sailor Nibs. Mm -hmm. They are gold nibs, um, and here we have three different examples. Well, we actually have many examples, but the basic is um, there's 14 karat nib, mm -hmm. 21 karat nib, and then 21 karat nib in a much larger size, which I'll go into in a second. Um, but here we have the 1911 series. More specifically, we have all of these right here, 1911 standard in 14 karat nib. Yeah. And the 14 karat nibs tend to be, um, the bodies are on the smaller size, mm -hmm. right? And then over here we have the Pro Gear Sailor Pens, and all of these have 21 karat gold nibs, and those pens and nibs are also on the larger size. That's right. Right? And then all of these nibs come in seven different sizes. Yeah. 
So we have extra fine, fine, medium, medium fine, mm -hmm. broad, uh, music, and zoom. And what's super cool is that um, the difference in the sailor bodies is so subtle, but it really seems to change the whole feel and look of the pen, right? So here, for example, this is the 1911 standard, and it has a rounder bottom and a rounder top. And then over here in Pro Gear, it has a flat top with a really, really beautiful um, sailor logo. Yeah, so pretty, I, know, I, love, I love seeing that. And the bottom is also flat. Um, so it just kind of gives you a very different feel when you're holding the pen. It's just a different vibe. Yeah. Um, and then a super fun sailor pen is um, appropriately named the sailor king of pen, right? <laughs> and you huge. can see you know, I have a very <laughs> tiny hand and this is like, I feel like I'm holding like a baton, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it writes so beautifully and it has such a large um, nib, which is also 21 carat, but it's significantly larger than the 21 carat, say, on the Pro Gear pen I have here. Yeah. So actually, you know what? Let me put this down for a second. Mm. And let me just show you. Because they're both 21 carat, but the king of pen nib is significantly larger, right? So, whoa! So, <laughs> so much bigger. Fun. Like, it just, it's, it would be weird to have this little nib on, on this, this big right. pen. So right. I feel like they had to size it up. Exactly. So it's, like... it's, it's definitely significant. Um, oopsie. Same thing up. Um, and okay. then what's cool is that Sailor has so many beautiful um, resin bodies. Right, so they come in all these different colors and they have all these different um, special series, like the one that Daisy just showed us, her yeah, Dragon Palace Dragon pen, Palace. right? <laughs> and they all have all these beautiful stories behind them. Um, and there's just so many different variations of Sailor fountain pens that you can get. And it really comes down to what we're talking about today, which is, do you prefer a 14 karat gold nib or a 21 karat gold nib? So Daisy here is gonna tell us all about all the different line comparisons with and basically the different feel between those two nibs because that's a question that we commonly get. Yay! Um, so, as I was saying earlier, um, I was at this all afternoon doing this line comparison and, you know, I, I know I know these pens fairly well in general, um, but it was definitely interesting to sit down and write with like a 14K extra fine mm -hmm. followed by a 21 karat extra fine and then like size up one after right. the other. And there were some, definitely some interesting takeaways. Mm -hmm. So one of the interesting things that I thought was that pretty much the 14K extra fine um, and the 21K extra fine are like the same line variation, the same line width, um, and the same goes for the fine, um, and then the medium fines are really, really close as well. But where you get a really stark difference and where it starts to really contrast is the medium nib. So the 14 karat medium nib is much thinner than the 21 karat medium nib. So if you're somebody who likes a medium nib, you'll definitely want to consider getting more of a 21K nib or size up for the 14 karat. Um, and then overall, there are, people ask me all the time, like what's the difference between the 14 karat and the 21K? Mm -hmm. And there is a huge difference in how they feel. The 14 karat, there's definitely a lot more feedback mm -hmm. and the 21K does have more feedback than some other brands, right. but the 21K is like buttery smooth. Mm -hmm. Um, and the nib is a lot softer right. too. Um, and I think that, that comes because of the, the difference in the gold and then also because of the size difference of the nib, it's bouncier, mm -hmm. it's juicier to write with. So a lot of the nibs are wetter. Um, so there's a difference. I mean, if you like some, if you're somebody who just likes a wetter nib, um, the 21K might be for you. And you I, also, I also think it correlates to, um, the feel of the size and weight of a pen in your hand. For right, sure. Because the 14 karat nibs go with the smaller pens and the 21 karat with the larger pens. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's interesting because like I use the Pro Gear Slim, but which you think is like good for me because I'm like a small person, mm -hmm. but even the Pro Gear is actually really, I think it's well balanced, even yeah. though even though it's a larger pen, the weight is like centered around the body of like around the middle. So it's, it's really well balanced in your hand, even if you're a little person right. writing with a huge pen. Um, and also the fact that you can post it. Yeah. Like you can 
customize your pen right then and there, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if I think that this feels better in my hand, or say I have a little bit of a larger hand, or maybe I just like having that balance while I'm writing, you yeah. can really just customize it by posting the pen. Yeah, it's a exactly. new pen. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the general differences between the 14K and the 21K, but stay stay a little bit later and we'll we'll go into more more detail and show you guys the actual line comparisons and the line width differences um and what they compare to the to the uh copic marker that we wrote with yeah yeah <laughs> okay guys so we're gonna dive right in here and uh start with our sailor nib line comparisons um this here is a 14k Extra fine nib, extra fine, and what I'll do is take a ruler, I have my Hobonichi stencil here, um, and I'll just do a line, careful not to smear, um, and then we'll do some of these, I don't know what they're called. I, don't, I just call them little squigglies. Um, but they're good for doing like testing pens and testing nibs because they kind of approximate when you're writing script with all the loops and the ascenders and the descenders. And then sometimes what I like to do is like these jagged ones because I do write in like caps a lot or like all, all uppercase letters a lot so i think that one approximates that so this was the 14k um extra fine nib and now i'm gonna um, i'm gonna do the 21k extra fine so this is the pro gear that we have it on but it's also on the 1911l this is the 21k extra fine and I'm just going to do the exact same thing for all of these pens and all of these nibs. Take my ruler. And do my line. And if this smears, I'm going to cry. <laughs> okay. And the 21 karat just feels so much smoother, even for an extra fine pen, um, than the 14 karat. And then, um, so we talked about earlier, like what pens we're gonna be choosing to do this line comparison with. And what we have here is the Copic Multi-Liner. Um, and per my earlier testing, um, I thought that it was the 0.3 that really was a very close approximation to the line width of the 14K and the 21K. So I'll do that. So that is the line for the 0.3 millimeter Copic multi liner okay you guys can kind of see that those are so close in line with and then even with the 14 carat um so the 14 carat and the 21 carat extra fines are really really close to each other um in line with and I think they are also really well, it's a, it's a good comparison to the 0.3 Copic Multiliner. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do the 14 karat, we're just gonna like go in order of nib size here. Um, we're gonna do the 14 karat fine. So I have that here, my 1911S. I love the gold nib. We we like we like gold trim here at Yoseka. If you if you haven't noticed with all of our all of like Neil Neil uses a 1911S and then I also I use a Pro Gear Slim, um, but we like we have the gold trim. 
Um, so this is the 14 karat fine. And here's my line. And squiggles. <laughs> if anyone knows what these are called, please tell me. <laughs> okay. So that's the 14 karat fine. And now I'm going to move on and do the 21 karat fine. remember to take you guys with me um so this is the 21k fine and got my ruler do my line my squiggles and for this, like, since we're doing a line comparison, I'm really trying to, my trying my hardest, at least, to use the same, like, weight when I'm writing. So I'm not, like, pushing down harder on the 21K nib when I'm doing it because the 21K is a little bit softer than the 14K. So if I were to be pressing down a little bit harder, it would definitely come out as a wider line. So I'm doing my best not to do that um okay so moving on to the copic multi-liner um i'm actually going to be using the same 0.3 because i'll show you guys it it's very they're all very close um so this is the 0 0.3 millimeter copic multi-liner so that is the line comparison between the 21k fine um, and the 0 0.3 copic multi-liner and then we'll bring the 14k in as well and you can see that those are all those are all really well approximated, I believe. Um, and then to bring in some of the extra fines, you can kind of see they're all actually very similar. So the extra fine and the fine, they're all, they're all really, really fine, actually. Um, and they're all pretty, pretty similar to the naked eye. <laughs> I didn't get into measuring the actual line width of these lines, but um, it's pretty imperceivable to me, at least. And you can see with the, the multi-liner, they're all very close. Okay, so that was the 14K and the 21K extra fine and the fine and the pen comparison. So next we're gonna be doing the uh, comparison between the 14K, the 21K um, medium fine sailor nibs. Um, and medium fine uh, is a nice, it's an in-between between, between the fine and the medium. And actually a lot of sailors pens, a lot of their special release pens are only available in medium fine, such as their Shikiori series. Um, and so this is one that we get asked about a lot. So hopefully this will be helpful. Um, so here we go. This is the 14K medium fine. Whoa. And I'll do a little bit of smearing, but I think I can, I can live. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a line. And these guys. Okay, so that's the fourteen K medium fine. And now for the twenty one K medium fine.
This is the 21K medium fine. And for anyone wondering what ink we're using, this is the Sailor Gentle Blue Black. It's one of my favorite blue blacks. I think it's like has a really nice tone to it. Um, and I recommend it a lot. Okay. And for the pen for this one, I went with the Copic Multiliner. Um, we did we did all Copics um, just to keep it consistent for this comparison. Um, the Copic Multiliner in a 0.5. Um, but there's a slight note to it. So this is the 0.5 Copic Multiliner. But I'm going to say it's a little less than that. You know, it's not a perfect approximation. The medium fine is not quite as thick as that. Um, and the 14K also is not quite as thick as that. But it's definitely a step up from the 0.3 that we were using before. Um, and what we'll do later um, is we'll do like side-by-side -side line comparisons um, that are a little bit more condensed and easier to view. But so that's just kind of like for you guys to see now. Okay, so moving on, the next nib is going to be the 14K um, in medium. So here we go. This is the 14K medium oops <laughs> okay and there's the line and Of my okay, so we're gonna follow that with you guessed it the twenty one k medium. Here's what that looks like. So if you guys were like watching this whole time, you will probably notice that this is where the 14K and the 21K nibs really, this is like the biggest difference. Um, so, I mean, I like a really fine nib, but actually whenever I write with the 21K medium nib, I... I kind of fall in love with it because it's so buttery smooth and but you guys can see it's like quite a step up it's a lot broader than the 14k medium and you can see it um okay so for this one um again i kept there there isn't like a step up from so for the for the medium fine we said it was slightly less than a 0.5 copic multiliner and for the medium I chose a 0.5 Copic Multiliner again, but this is really a closer match for it. You can see. So this is the 0 0.5 millimeter Copic Multiliner. So that's very close to me. Okay, next we are going to do the 14K broad nib. 
Okay. Go. This is the 14K broad. actually a very relaxing way to spend a Sunday morning just drawing lines <laughs> over and over. It's very meditative. Maybe you guys can try it at home. <laughs> okay, the next, of course, we're going to do the 21K broad nib. One K broad. Okay. And this is where I really might smear, so I'm gonna hold my breath when I'm drawing this line. <gasps> okay, I made it. I made it. Okay. <laughs> um My squiggles. Oh, it's so smooth. I mean, sometimes I think about, I rethink my, my fine pen decisions, but alas, I write pretty small, so I don't know if it's possible. But they are so nice to write with. <laughs> um, okay, so for this, this line comparison, um, for the pen, I chose a 0.8. Copic multi-liner, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so this is a 0 0.8 millimeter Copic multi-liner. Ooh, have I been spelling that? Okay, I spelled that right. Okay, um, but I'm gonna put a little less than sign next to it too because it's not quite, it's not exactly there. Maybe it's like a 0.7 or something, but sadly there's no 0.7 Copic multi-liner, um, but I think it comes pretty close. So it's almost a 0.8, but not quite. All right, so there we go. That's the 14K, the 21K, and the pen, which is 0.8, but it's slightly less than 0.8. All right, so I hope that was fun for you guys. Now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna move my masterpiece to the side over here. I'm trying not to spill my tea on it. So now um, we're gonna do that line comparison that's a little more condensed um, so that hopefully you guys can get all in one view, all the different line comparisons um, and just be able to judge for yourself like at one go all the, all the different lines. Um, so before we did the five basic uh, sailor nibs, the extra fine, the fine, medium, uh, I'm sorry, the extra fine, the fine, the medium fine, the medium and the broad. Um, and for this line comparison, we're actually going to be including the um, broad or sorry, the music and the zoom nibs, which are sailors' special nibs. Um, but we'll be we'll be doing more in depth about that later as well. All right, so uh, that was the condensed version of the line comparison between the 14k, the 21k, and the pens um, in all seven sailor nibs, sailor standard nibs. Um, so here in this column, you can see the extra fine, the fine, the medium fine, the medium, and we also included the broad, um, uh, well, we also included the music and the zoom. Here in this column, we see the 21K 
um, and the same seven nibs. And as I was saying before, you can really see it here. The, the line variations are all actually very close between the 14K and the 21K going down. You guys can see for yourselves. Um, but where the difference really comes in for me is the medium nib. So the medium 14K and the medium 21K. And you can really see it not only in the line, but especially in these little squigglies which are so fine over here, and they're very beefy over here. And that's been for a lot of the 21K medium pens that we've tried, it's been, it's been like that. Um, and so it is, it's consistent across Sailor 21 karat nibs. They're just a jump up from the medium fine. Um, it's, it's nice. I mean, it was very, it's very buttery smooth to write with. It's like a very, very nice writing experience. Um, and then in this last column here, we have the pen um, comparisons. So the Copic multiliners basically come in um, a lot of different sizes, but they, but out of the ones that we have, we had uh, a 0.3 to choose from, um, a 0.5, a 0.1, and of course they have thicker ones like a one millimeter, and they have much thinner ones like a 0 0.05. Um, but the thinnest one that we used for the extra fine is the 0.3. And we really found that the fine nib and the extra fine nib are very close together. So they're both pretty much a 0.3. Um, and then the medium fine is definitely a bit thicker than the extra fine and the fine, as you guys can see here. Um, so the closest line comparison, and I smeared a little here, and I'm very sad about that. Um, the closest line comparison was the 0.5 Copic multiliner, but it didn't come exactly to that. It was a little bit less than that, so maybe it would be like a 0.4. Um, and then the next nib size is the Sailor Medium. Um, so the Sailor 21K Medium, as we said earlier, is a lot thicker than the Sailor 14K medium. So I think that the Sailor 21K medium really comes close to the 0.5 Copic multi-liner. But the Sailor 14K medium over here, since it is quite a bit thinner than the medium in the 21K, would probably be closer to like a 0.4, slightly, slightly under that. Um, and then lastly, we have the broad nib, um, which, the broad is also, so after the medium, right, the broad in the 14K and the broad in the 21K, there is a little bit of a difference there too, and you can see it in these little squigglies on the second row. Um, the broad nib in the 14K is definitely not as broad as the broad nib in the 21K. Um, and the line width that we chose for that is 0.8, even though it doesn't exactly come to that either. I would say maybe it's like a 0.7 and maybe a 0.6 for the 14K. Um, and here we also included some comparisons for the music nibs and the zoom nibs, um, but they're both special and not exactly your everyday writing pens. Um, some people use them for calligraphy and drawing, and we'll go into them a little bit later. Um, so I didn't really choose a pen approximation because it's not, it's not, it can't be compared to like a regular pen exactly because they do a lot more than that. Okay, so it's finally time to talk about some of these um, special fun nibs. Um, here I have the 14K uh, Sailor Music nib. So this is the 14K. And sometimes these do, I mean, they you, you need to start them a little bit. Um, so this is the 14K Music. And... We did the comparison earlier, um, and there's really very little difference between, like in line width at least, um, between the 14K music and the 21K music, but we'll do that again. Um, so they are very close in terms of how they write, but how they feel is like a different story. You know, the 21K is obviously a lot smoother um, so for the purposes of this, um, it's not so much about comparing between the 14K and the 21K. So I think I'll just be using the 21K in this, um, just to, just to play around with it a little bit. 
Um, so the music nib is kind of interesting. Um, historically, it was used to um, created to like write music notes, and I'm not a musician, um, so please don't correct me on my musical note right there. But it definitely, you know, I can see the appeal for that. They are very um, thick in front. Um, they have a flat tip, and they are they're very easy like to fill in these circles here um and that is the extent of my musical note uh drawing ability so i'm gonna stop right there um but today at least uh you know a lot of customers come into the store and um a lot of customers who like practice calligraphy are specifically interested in this one because um it kind of resembles a stub nib pretty closely um, and even reminds me a little bit of like a parallel pen in some ways. Like you can see, even when I'm doing these downstrokes, it um, kind of ticks up at that last end there. And it does it very naturally. Like I'm not really lifting the pen in any specific way. Um, but so that can make, that can make like very pretty calligraphy letters. Um, so I think that is one of the reasons why like this pen, the way the nib is shaped, it is just very suitable for calligraphy. Um, and so we'll do some writing with it. I mean, I can just do my script. Um, and little squigglies and I think another reason why a lot of people like it for calligraphy is because it does have these very thick downstrokes quite naturally like just the way the nib articulates with the paper surface um, and then on your upstrokes it's very thin just like that so that's what the upstrokes look like on an angle um, and so quite naturally I think if you're writing script with it like I was over there with that word it it looks really nice it looks like calligraphy um without without like me I don't practice calligraphy I don't know how to write calligraphy um but it does it does look really nice if I can say so myself um and so you know I'll do some lines with it so it's really thick broad strokes um horizontally thick broad strokes vertically with like a little tick up at the end there which I think is so pretty um, and then very thin strokes up yeah and I'll do maybe some print writing that is the sailor music nib it's really a lot of fun to write with um you guys can see so kind of did a lot of different things um the 14k and the 21k are very close together uh <laughs> i drew some very silly looking music notes um very thick vertical strokes and thick horizontal strokes um thin upward strokes um, and then, you know, almost like calligraphy writing results, I think. They look really nice. So now it is time for the Sailor Zoom Nib. Um, so the Zoom Nib is actually unique to Sailor. Um, and so we get a lot of inquiries about this one too. And I'm going to do the same thing where I do the 14K Zoom I think the Z is like my worst character that I write because it's so uncommon and it's very rare to write it. I hate the way my Zs look. They look like twos. Um, but so that's the 14K Z zoom. Um, and then side by side, I'll show you guys the 21K zoom. Um, and 
they are pretty similar in line with again it's very hard to see the difference the 21k is definitely wetter um and just easier to write with overall since it is a little bit of like you know these like these calligraphy nibs or like these slightly unusual like not your everyday writing nibs they're not they definitely take a little bit of getting used to um so and then a softer nib is always it is always just easier to write with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna use the 21K nib because <laughs> I like it. Um, okay, so the thing about the zoom nib is that you can create different line widths um, based on how you're angling the pen. So if I was writing at, for example, a 90 degree angle, Like this those are pretty thin lines so right here 90 degrees um, so here I'm holding the pen at a 90 degree angle to the paper and for this pen those are pretty thin lines and then if I was to go down to um, a rough like I don't know a rough approximation of a 60 degree angle which is this I'm trying not to get in the way here but um, like that you can see the line width gets a lot thicker and so that is a 60 degree angle and then if I was going to go all the way down, and this is what you can do with this pen, um, if I was going to go all the way down to a 45 degree angle, I can actually make really thick strokes. And this is like the beauty of this pen, basically. 45 degrees. So you can see the difference. There's a 90 degree angle where you're holding the pen straight to the paper, a 60 degree angle where you're holding the pen just a little bit, like, I think like that's how I normally hold a pen. Um, and then a 45 degree angle, which is like very close to the paper, um, these really thick marker-like strokes. Um, so sometimes I do call this zoom nib a marker. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so let's do, some little squigglies so so the squigglies you can see these really broad lines also and then this pen is also kind of fun to sketch with like if you want to color things in and if you like to just like sketch um, we've had like architects come in and be really interested in this pen um, and then another thing that's special about the zoom nib is that you are able to flip it on its head. So like in the way that you would not write with any other fountain pen, um, you can flip it. So here we're going to write so the nib right now is upside down. So if you're like, if you have this pen and you're you need to write something small, like a little note, a little, uh, a little note in the margin or something, you can flip this pen upside down and write a really thin line. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this for like, if you're trying to do pages of writing because it's not, it's not like, so smooth like if you're gonna write pages and you're looking for a fine pen you should just get the fine or an extra fine or even a medium fine um but that's just if you do have the zoom nib and you're just looking for um a thinner line it does do that as well which is a really nice option um but yeah typically you would be writing you'd be writing either this very you know medium line when you have the 90 degree angle, you'd be writing this, I guess I would call this uh, a broad line when you're writing at a 60 degree angle and then like a marker line <laughs> if you're writing at the 45 degree angle. So yeah, 
that everybody is the sailor zoom nib Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you had a ton of fun learning a little bit more about one of our favorite fountain pens here at Yoseka. Um, we hope that now you can tell the difference between a 14 karat and a 21 karat gold nib. Yeah. And we look forward to making more awesome videos like this about uh, fountain pens. Yay. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know what your favorite sailor pen and nib are in the comments below. Yeah.